There are many reasons that socialism is so attractive to so many people in this country, especially younger people. You have you know, the impact of higher education. You have the simplicity of a Marxist argument. All those things are spoken about all the time. They're discussed. People have heard about them. But I want to talk about another reason, something that I think explains why so many, especially young people, are attracted to socialism that you never hear discussed. And that's computer games. Let me explain what I'm talking about. There are many genres of computer games. Uh, you have you know, first-person shooters, you have massively multiplayer games. But among all those games, strategy, tactics, operations, there are what are generally called builders. You know, you're building a city, you're building up a country, you're building up an empire. Some of these are, are, are very popular and have been around for a long time. The, the game Caesar, where you're basically building up a Roman city, I think it's up to Caesar four now. Uh, there's another a very popular one called Tropico, which I think is up to version six, which has been around for years, more than a decade. And in that one, you're, you're actually sort of like a Caribbean tin pot dictator. He could be socialist, he could be capitalist, but he's usually portrayed, you know, with a beard, sunglasses, military uniform, fatigues, and a cigar. He sort of looks like maybe maybe it's Castro, maybe you're really running Cuba. But in these builders, what you have to do is build up your your city, your country, whatever it is you're building, your empire. And you do this with top-down decision making. Everything is centrally planned. For example, if you're, if you're playing Tropico, you've got to build everything you need on the island. You need food. You need an expanding population. You need transportation. You need ports. You need fisheries. You need logging. You need mining. You need foreign investment. You have to do all these things yourself if you run the game, which you do. And if you don't keep the right balance, you start going into decline. If you get too much of something, you could have a revolution. The army might take over. Uh, it, it, there's all these things that can go wrong. And it's very hard to build up your economy and keep it balanced. So you have you know, food and water and education and medical care and all the other things you need and keep the people happy. In other games, for example, there was a game years ago in the Total War series called Empire. You know, you play France or Britain or Russia or the Ottoman Empire. But, you know, if you're playing the British Empire, you have to build it up. You have to decide which ports to increase the capacity of. You have to build roads. You have to expand mines. You have to develop new colonies. You have to do all these things. And everything's done via central planning. Now, if you take a game like empire, where you're, say, working with the British, this is the century, it goes from 1700 to 1800, of the rise of modern capitalism. This is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution you're seeing in Great Britain. Now, of course, capitalism didn't develop that way. It didn't develop by you know one person sitting there and deciding everything that needed to be done in the British Empire. That's not the way it worked. They didn't decide where they were going to build a road. They didn't decide let's expand this mine. They didn't decide, let's improve the farming in, in, in this area of Sussex. That's not the way it worked. And these things happened on their own. Now, in the game, if you just want to focus on the military aspects of your empire, you can do that. You can let the AI run everything. The AI will make all the decisions about internal economic improvements, which in a realistic sense would be how things happen. Because you know the British monarchy wasn't controlling all these things, or the French monarch wasn't controlling all these things, the Ottoman Sultan wasn't controlling all these things. That's not how the world developed or develops today, except in socialist economies where you have things like five-year plans and everything is centrally controlled, state controlled. The problem with these builders is when a game, again, like Empire, Total War, if you let the AI run it, it doesn't do a very good job. It, and you know it won't do a good job because sometimes when you're first starting to play, there's so much going on, you let the AI do it and you find out that you have to take it over and do it yourself. You can always do a better job of the AI. Now, that's not a function of a, a realistic simulation. It's just a function of the incapabilities of the AI to handle 
all the myriad things that you need to do to build up your economy. Likewise, on the battlefield, you can let the computer run your battles and campaigns for you to a great extent, especially the battles. But what, what you quickly learn is you can usually do a better job than the computer will. So you have to, unless you want to just you know suffer occasional defeats and, and have a much difficult time, more difficult time, you take over the armies and you control every battle, you know, in every front every frontier where you're on. And if you're, you know, you're trying to expand the Roman Empire or the British Empire, there's a lot of stuff going on and it takes a lot of time and it takes makes the game much longer to play. I mean, a lot longer to play. So for a hundred years and there's multiple turns per year, I mean, you're, you're going on and on and on and on if you have to fight every battle. But you're also generally running the entire economy. Now, if you look at all these games, whether they be military or civil, you know, Sim City. There's there's loads and loads and loads of these games. Just you know, search do a Google search for you know PC games builders, and and you'll get all all these different types of games set in different times and different places, and you know, it's it's just amazing what what you have to do. You can you know you can build up a railroad system. You can build up a circus. <laughs> You can build up, you know, a supermarket chain. You can do all these stuff, but they all require centralized planning. And if if you think about it, kids are growing up playing these things. And one, one of the lessons you would expect them to learn from these games is that a centralized planner can do a better job than, you know, the, the function of the economy itself. If you let the economy run itself in these games, it won't do a very good job because the AI is weak. The AI, the computer AI, isn't up to do as good a job as a human being. I mean, you're running it on a PC. You're not running it on a you know one of these super duper computers that IBM puts out or somebody like something like that that can you know can beat a chess master. You know these computers cannot beat chess masters. Your typical desktop PC. And that's what these games are designed for. So you have these games that, if left to their own devices running an economy, will do a pretty pathetic job. So one of the things you learn from playing these games is the key to economic success, the key to having a balanced economy is to take it over, do it yourself, top-down, centralized planning. And these People, as they grow up, play these games. So it doesn't surprise me when and they get to college and they have a, a Marxist professor, a socialist professor, spouting off all these ideas about the virtues of socialism, the virtues of centralized planning, the, vet, the, the virtues of the state making decisions and not allowing the capitalist free market economy to make the decisions. It's an attractive proposition that's being sold to them. Because they said, ah, you know, it's just like playing Tropico 5, or it's like playing Empire Total War, or, or Total War Rome 2, or you know, the, the one set in China, or the one set in Japan. All these games involve centralized control of the economy, top down. You have to plan your economy. And if you don't, you lose the game. And the computer, if you let the computer do it, it won't do a very good job. And I think that's one of the reasons, there are many others, but that's one you don't hear, this is one you don't hear talked about a lot, why so many people, they get to college and they hear these ideas of socialism, it resonates with them because they've learned that themselves from playing computer games. Yeah, of course, centralized planning makes more sense. Of course, top-down, government-controlled planning of the economy makes sense. I've been doing that on you know, Tropico 1, Tropico 2, Tropico 3, Tropico 4, Tropico 5. And hell, I just got, you know, Tropico 6. Yeah, centralized planning is the key. You'll always have better results if you let the government control the economy. That's what I think. Let me know what you think in a comment. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. It doesn't bother me. Uh, and uh, share the video with your friends. That always helps. And until the next time.
keep fighting.